Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll pick up right where we left off. Before we can see our agents in a crowd context, it's very important to make sure that once you are done with your crowds, you will be able to render it. In this chapter, we'll be using the two characters as examples that we created in the previous chapter, converting their materials to Houdini supported materials and assigning these materials back after our characters are converted to crowd agents. We'll be diving into Solaris and understanding the crowd workflow within USD. So to get started, let's dive back inside our agent template. Usually, most FPX character exports do come with materials embedded within them. However, based on our characters, this might differ. I will be walking you through how to create materials that can be used within Solaris using the Karma renderer as well as introducing you to a plugin, which makes it easier for you to convert the embedded materials into materials that can be used in Solaris. So firstly, I'll take a sub-network. Let's call this mat and dive inside it. Let's create a material network you can name this the same as your agent name. This step is very important, especially when you're creating these materials manually. Since we'll be using a VEX code to reference the materials present within it based on the agent name. So let's dive inside. Here, you can take a Karma material builder dive inside it and in this material like standard surface you can plug in all your image textures that come with your fvx file so we can take a material x image node i'll rename this to diffuse this is where i'll be plugging in my diffuse map when we have these maps embedded within our fvx Houdini extracts these to use and places them in a folder next to the FBX file. So we have this folder that ends with the .fbm. This is where Houdini sources all the film box maps which come with your FBX file. So I'll be taking the diffuse map first. I'll connect it in the base color node. Now, as you can see, we have two more maps specular and normal as well. So I'll copy this node twice, call this specular and connect it to specular color. And then normal. So now our material is ready. Still, we won't be able to reference this material since we'll be using the FBX material name attribute to refer to this material. So you can go inside the geometry spreadsheet Go to primitives and we have only one FBX material name value. You can copy this name and paste it here. Now our material is ready. Before we can move on to stage, let's take a new geo node. And I'll call this agent contact sheet. I'll take an object merge and select my agent. Before we are able to render this, we need to do the agent definition cache again to store the materials within our agent. So just click on save to disk and reload once. Now let's take a null and call it out crowds. Copy this node 
and in stage, I can paste it in the SOP crowds import node. So now we have our agents coming in Solaris. We know crowds are instanced based on a single geometry. So we can apply the materials to the single geometry that the crowds are being instanced from. And our shape library is basically all the shape names coming from the shape name attribute, which in our case is coming from the FBX material name attribute. Firstly, we need to bring in our material. So for that, I'll take a scene import materials node. I'll turn off import objects and only keep on import materials. And inside the additional materials parameter, instead of selecting all the materials, I'll only be importing any material that is present within our agent template. So I can copy my agent template. paste the path here and put the slash and asterisk twice so that we get all the materials that are present within our agent template. I'll connect this to my SOP crowd import node. Now we have to let Houdini know that we need to connect all the shapes to the names corresponding to them inside this path. And we need to do that without hard coding anything so that this can be used for any agent that is present within our agent template inside any crowd simulation. First, in the primitives tab, I can drag and drop my shape. So this way, it will only apply materials to this one shape. To make Houdini search for all the shapes under all the agents, we can use agent definitions as a path and put asterisks before and after it so that it looks for all the agent definitions present within our scene and all the shapes present within the agent definitions. So now we can start writing our wrangle code. You can take a string name for which we could use the function usd underscore name. 0, which is our input connected to this wrangle, and prim path is the path of the objects that is coming in through the input. So this variable will be storing paths of all the objects coming in. Next, we need to take another variable, call it string agent path for which we can take the parent path. We want the parent path of our parent path. To do that, we can use this function twice. And put in our prim path. If at any time you are confused with what this code is doing, you can simply copy and paste from the example file provided. Or if you want to understand what each of these functions will be outputting, we can use a printf function and print the variable. So now in our console, we can see that it's printing a bunch of paths. We won't be using all of them, rather we will be using the one that gives us our agent name. This will be used to reference our materials inside our template. We can get the name of our agent using string agent name is equal to usd underscore name zero comma agent path. And for our final variable, we can create string mats, which will give us the path of our materials. To get started, we can either hard code our agent template path or create a parameter 
using CHS. So what CHS does is if you click on this button, it will create a string parameter. In this, we can go to edit parameter interface, select our agent template parameter and change it to operator path. So now we can connect our agent template by clicking on this button. We can get rid of the back ticks. Now to refer to the agent name within it, I'll put a slash and then agent name variable. Now we know it's saved in a sub network. It will always be saved inside a sub network called mats. We can use mats. Then our material network can also be referred to by our agent name. And our shape name after the slash will be the name variable. So this expression will create your materials for you. Now we want to make sure that when we run this code, it only runs on the shape name that matches the materials. We can do that using an if statement, where if the mats path is not found within the USD scene graph, we do nothing. Else, we use a USD apply API. This is a function that is used to just apply the material binding API to our shapes. Then we can create a string array and call it targets and create an array of mats. Lastly, we can use a USD set relationship targets function where we'll be setting the material binding for our shapes to the materials present in the targets. So while it's just a few lines of code that can automate and make your life quite easy, if you feel that you're uncomfortable with coding, you can go ahead and copy the wrangle from the example files. You should not be feeling pressured or overwhelmed while writing this code. We still don't have our materials coming in and that is because I have misspelled the path. I'll remove the S. And also go back to object level. where I've forgotten to change the image map textures for our normal and specular maps. Let's connect these to the correct maps. Now we can switch to Karma XPU and we can see that our materials are coming in. Our agent is rendering correctly. For most Mixamo characters, you're probably fine creating materials manually. But if we go back into our object net, and open our DAS character. Go to geometry spreadsheet and click on primitives. We can see that we have tons of different material names. For that, I will be providing you an OTL with this course called Matte Extractor. What you can do in this is use input type as input geometry, select FBX material name, and in the mat network name, I can copy the agent name parameter again and paste relative references. So this way, your mat network name will be the same as your agent name. Let's click on create materials. 
and based on the embedded data, this tool creates all the materials for you. I found this amazing tool on Gumroad that I modified to be used with crowd agents inside a Solaris pipeline. If you find this node useful, please consider supporting the original developer. Once you have created all the materials, specifically for Dash characters, we need to do a bit more modification by deleting a few geometries so that our eye textures are visible. After doing that, we can save to disk on our agent definition cache again and click on reload. Now, in our agent contact sheet node, I'll add my second character and use an align and distribute to spread these out evenly. So one of the things to keep in mind is if you have custom materials coming in, they might not show up in the Houdini viewport. But if we switch to Karma XPU, you can see that our character is now showing up with all the materials applied to it. That's it for this lesson. Similarly, we can go ahead and keep adding characters in our contact sheet. To automate that as well, instead of adding individually, we can import everything that is present within our agent template. And that way, as in when we add more characters, they will automatically get added in our contact sheet. Thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson.